What's up? Hey, how's everybody doing? Oh man, that mic is hot today. Um, don't know why the mic is running so hot. But I just realized I should probably switch to the wireless mic for this since we're going to be working on a printer. Um, yeah. Let's see. Clara's in the house with the wife. She ditched me right after I gave her a bunch of treats. That traitor. So hang on, let me... Uh... My charger is not cooperating. Why you no charge? Charge my batteries. Um, let me get the wireless mic. Got a fresh pair of some NIMH the NIM the NIMA NIMA batteries. Nickel metal hydride, I think, is the the correct term for them um yeah this little battery charger i have in my desk here is just like so wonky it's not wanting to charge these there it goes um so yeah let me uh let me pop this on we're gonna go rossman style with the little the little over the ear microphone let's see here do 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 all right let's let's see let's see if this works let me turn this on Check, check, one, two. There we go. Okay. Something happened where my device names changed. So, um, yeah. So it did not, um, it did not switch over correctly. Oh, I lost the little, the little condom thing. Little, little thing. Hang on. Let me put that back on. Otherwise, we're going to get a bunch of wind noise. And there we go. All right. So, yeah, uh, Clara is with the wife. She dipped out on it, me right after I gave her treats. I'm sure she'll get dumped out here at some point. So we'll see that. So what we're going over today is a printer I've had for, I actually got this a couple months ago, just haven't had a chance to do it. And I figured, well, I um, already have the firmware done for it, so may as well get it unboxed and go through flashing it and setting up and see what changed with uh, with the V1 to the V2. So uh, as far as I know, the V2 is the V1, but it has a heated bed. So I'm expecting to see a bigger power supply, a heated bed. The board should be the same. So let's uh, let's get into it. So it's still, still sealed. Uh, both sides have not touched it. That's how we do things here. We uh, unbox it all live. So that way you guys get to see everything from start to finish. Um, I did get, if you guys notice this pile of coax PLA here, um, I am starting on the uh, the Neo Nano Leaf thingies, so which I got to fire those up again. I got twelve of them printed, and I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna I'm gonna get the bases printed for them, and then build a couple of them, see how I like them. Maybe I won't. Maybe I won't go with the design I'm printing. Maybe I'll change it. But let's see here. Let me pull up the live chat, pop that out onto my other screen here, and make it bigger so I can read it while I'm standing. Ooh. All right. Let's see. Assembly guide. 
Um, we're gonna install the frame, so top, bolt to the bottom, install, they call it the power box, but we're gonna install the power supply, and then we're gonna bolt the, uh, bolt the control box to it. Shows connecting the wires here. I do see XT60s. Hopefully, uh, hopefully things will be done correctly, and they won't be, uh, cheap knockoffs. Like Creality has had issues with in the past is our little box o tools and stuff in here. I think I put my knife away now. Filament holder or spool holder, I should say. Uh, U.S. power plug. Um, this was bought by us, by the way. The Mega Zero V1 they sent to us um, to give them feedback on before it was released. This one we paid out of pocket for. Not that that changes anything really, to be honest, but just wanted to disclose that uh, the power is set to 230 volts, so we will need to change that later. We'll see if the guide me mentions changing that. Uh, the other one, the V1, that's not a big deal, and it didn't have a switch because it was just a power brick that accepts 110 to 220, so there's no switch on it. All right. get that out of here it's very well packaged I'll give them that this does look like it has a mag base type thing on it not a uh, just like a sticker sheet so that is an upgrade although it looks like it's a floppy member type yeah it is it's just like the Creality one we'll see how we we'll see how well it holds up to the heat because typically the uh, typically the Creality ones, they they don't withstand well to the heat. They start losing their strength when you start printing above 60C. So, let's see. Everything looks pretty good. Everything's sleeved all nicely. And heat shrunk. So, let's see. This has, I believe the V1 had, uh, I got a loose bolt here. I believe the V1 had uh, linear rods on the Y, didn't it? I feel like I feel like it did. Oh, oh, let's get that into position here. Come on, tilt down, tilt down. You can do it. Come on, mount. There we go. Sorry, I should have moved OBS to my other monitor because right now it's kind of hard to look over there while I'm adjusting it. I'll have to move that. So, let's see here. I move OBS over, and let me get chat going. All right. So, we should be in pretty good shape here now. Um, just got to grab the upper portion of the printer, just right here. And let's go ahead and look at the manual and see what we're gonna do. Like I said, we're gonna we're gonna bolt the top on here. Then we're gonna put the power supply on. We're gonna put the filament holder on, and then we're gonna install the control box. It does show connecting the Z and Y limit switches, um, along with the motor connections as well. And it shows you to route the. Uh, to route the power cord underneath the frame. That's a nice touch because you don't want to have it above. So it's good that they pointed that out. Um, it does say here to set the power supply voltage, which is good. So I think that's uh, that's all we need to do to get into this. So let's start getting this sucker built. And how's everybody doing today? It's Tuesday. Let's see. Got a little generic SD card in here. A little QC pass. This says, sorry, this says FQC. So what is that, you know, is that a, like, fucking quick check? Like, it's higher. It's the next level of quick check. It's not just a regular quick check. It's the fucking quick check. Or maybe it's fast quick check. Fast quick check? What do we think it is? Is it fast quick check or what? 
Not a great day here, but getting by. Cold and tired of looking at snow. Yeah, I had to go out and shovel because the guy that usually plows our stuff um, did not show up today. So that was fun. We have a lot of driveway. Um, and I was also looking at snow blowers. So. Yeah, I don't have a snow blower because I got a guy that usually takes care of that. But I'm kind of thinking about getting one just because um, I don't like relying on other people. Because sometimes they don't show up. And that meant I had to go out there and manually shovel everything, which is a pain. Like our driveway is, is from the shop all the way out to the street is probably about 450, 500 feet. Um, it's not a short distance. So I just, I'm just checking these bolts here on the frame. Because these are all loose. These are, these were all loose. Let's see. These are T nuts that hold the bed. Well, I'm gonna have to. I'm not gonna tighten these up because it looks like I'm gonna have to adjust this. Because look how, look how flimsy that is. A battery snow blower. Okay. Well, why don't you just when you when you get a real man snow blower, give me a call. I'm sorry. I'll get. I'll I'll do gas snow blower. Like maybe if you guys get like not that much snow, like. Sure, but I'm sorry. I'm going to go gas on my snow blowers. Like, think about it. Batteries do not do well in the cold. So you bring a battery-powered snow blower, you're going to get drop and sag on that, um, on that battery, which is going to reduce the life of it. I mean, it does heat up somewhat when you're using it, but still. Oh, man. This does not stay up on its own. All right. Now for the fun part. Balancing all of this while putting the screws in. Oh no. Come on. Come on. I should have probably got these bolts ready. Hang on. Let's uh let's take a step back here. Kids and wife complain about the gas ones. My dad has a gas one. I think it's a Tecumseh is the brand. Uh from like the 70s. It's huge. And he got it from um, he got it from our church or from his church way back in the day. I guess they got a new one. Uh, but like he got it before I was even born and that thing still runs to this day. And that thing works really well. It's amazing how long, uh, things last when you take care of them and you know what you're doing. So, but I feel like. I feel like things are pro probably were made better back then because I know it was made in the U.S. I was looking at all, the ones I was looking at are all made in China. It's like I'll pay a good amount for a made in U.S. snowblower. Like I don't want to be buying a new one every other year. So, like even Craftsman, they used to be a, they used to do a lot of stuff in the U.S. They're all Chinese stuff now, you know. And you can find good Chinese products. It's just not usually the norm. It's just harder when you're shopping in stores for stuff and you don't really know what's going into it. So if anybody's got a, got a recommendation that's like wide, I want a wider one. I'm open. I'm open. Even if it costs a little bit of money, I'd rather buy it once. Buy once, cry once, as they say. It's kind of my methodology with, with things and how we, do stuff here at the company. Like we don't want to sell, um, you know, we don't want to sell stuff that doesn't last long. I don't also don't personally want to buy stuff that doesn't last long. All right. Let's go ahead. This feels good. I'm going to go ahead and tighten these down. These are the M five by 45 bolts with a washer. I may have to come back and retighten this up. We'll find out. Or like loosen it up and square it. But everything seems to be going together pretty pretty well. The fitment's really nice. The thread's really nice. Just got rid of a Toro uh, Toro two cycle snow thrower from 1979. Man, I would have taken that. Alright. So it's starting to look like a printer now. Let's see if I can uh, I guess what this is what we'll do. We'll just leave it like that. All right. So 
So we've got XT60 going to the bed. We've got XT60 for the main power input on the board here. Uh, this is a different... This almost looks like they're used... So this is a plastic cover. The other one had a different cover. This does look like the same board. It just actually has the uh, the MOSFET populate. We'll, be, we'll open this up like I always do and go in here later. Um, but just slightly different from the other stuff. Um, so we got the filament spool holder, or sorry, power supply, power supply next. We're going to do an order. So it says, uh, two M4 by twenties to bolt the power supply up. Let's go ahead and do that. Wait, is this power cable just going to come down right here? Yeah, it's got it because if you put it the other way around, it's gonna hit the, uh, gonna hit the the AC cable is gonna hit the, uh, what's the word I'm searching for right now mentally? Um, it's gonna hit the bed. So, yeah, that's uh, that's interesting choice. I don't think it'll get in the way, but I would prefer to be able to route the power wire underneath, just like they tell you to do for the bed. Instead of having it in potential travel area for the bed itself, so I did. I don't. I don't think I did a video on it. I know I definitely posted something on our site about the uh, adding heated bed to the V1 of this, and we've been using that in our print farm. It's been running great, so no issues there. All right, so now we got to do the M4 by the the M5. Oh no, M4 by 20s as well for the top. Uh, question is, where did I just set the M4 by 20s? They're right here. Okay. And we got the spool holder. All right. I'm going to put the spool holder up top first before, and screw this in before I put, um, before I go ahead and put it Uh, put the rest of the parts on. Oh, it goes over here. Duh. Because the extruder is on the other side of this one. There we go. I think my dad still has Toro... Uh, uh, what's what I'm looking for? Lawn mowers too. When someone said they just got rid of a Toro snow blower or thrower, whatever you want to call it, I was. It's always I've always referred to them as snow blowers, but I guess th snow thrower also is the same kind of meaning. What do you guys refer to it? Is it a snow blower or a snow thrower? I'm just curious what you guys refer to them as because I'm sure it's going to be different depending on where people are at. How about this? How about you post the state you're in and if it's snow blower or snow thrower and see if there's any overlap. How's that? All right. All right. Not bad. They did give you ball end keys, so that made it easier. All right. Go ahead and put this through here. Tighten it down. Oh, yeah. Mm. Let's come back down here. Blower, blower either. Blower PA. Yeah, I was going to say, I, I, I feel like snow blower is like kind of the standard. Okay, so we got two M5 by six ones going in to hold the control box on here which I have right here. There's a T-nut on one. Okay, the back one gets a T-nut. The front one bolts in directly. So it's actually tapped in the front here. I'm 
I'm gonna leave this loose till I get the other one in. All right. So we put this in. Put T nut on. Let's see. Surprised they didn't tap that into the extrusion. A lot of companies are switching to that. Just less room for people to screw up the T nut going in. Um, I don't really care either way, to be completely honest. All right, that bolted up nice. So I can come back around to the front. Oh, except this has got to slide backwards. Yeah, it's the only downside with T nuts. They can shift. So make sure this is pushed all the way back before I tighten this up again. Because otherwise, in the front is pushing, uh, the front's push too far forward on here. Except now I can't get, there we go. My, my wrench was stuck. All right. So now all we have to do is make the connections. Now it says to make sure you put this underneath the, ex the aluminum extrusion. And I'm gonna see which way, if they want us to route it backwards or forwards. Um, power cord should be connected under the aluminum beams. Oh, that's for the power cord, not the bed. So they want the bed to come back out directly this way. And they want the power cord, which is this guy here, the male connector, which is the main power to go underneath. All right, we can do that. Unplug that in. Felt pretty solid. No complaints there. I'm sure I'll find something to complain about. Just just give it time, okay? Um, this looks like the bed. This says T1. Now, is that also linked or labeled T1 on here? It sure is. So, T1 to T1. Here's our bed thermistor connection. And then our power. Uh, this one feels a little... Loosey goosey. Doesn't pull out, but these are definitely, these feel like two different brands of connectors. Which, I mean, XT60 should work with XT60, but you can even see the color difference right here. All right, let's get the rest of it hooked up. So here's Z, so that goes over here. And I believe we connect on the two outer pins for the Z axis switch. Um, yeah, and the Y. So they connect on the two outer pins here. So this one, I would like to see these not be these little uh, spade connectors. Like, I mean, I guess this does make replacing the switch easier, but this just looks like a cost cutting measure. This is stuff I expect to see from ANET, not any cubic. So I'm nitpicking here. They both work. I'm just being honest with uh, what I'm seeing here and what I'd like to see. Um, I just got to make sure I get this underneath here because otherwise it's all going to get tangled up and pull on the wiring. And these are not polarity sensitive, so it doesn't matter which one you connect to which. It's just a switch. It's got to close these two contacts and open them. That's all it's got to do. So we got our Z motor here. Got our Y motor here. Should connect in underneath. Yep. And then again, the two outer plugs or two outer terminals on the switches themselves. See, the thing is, these come off way easier than a JST would. So I will complain about this because there's definitely more room for people being like, my Axis won't home and it's ramming the, the end stop. Um, with this kind of setup versus another one. All right, though. Let's see. All we should have left to do. I mean, that went together pretty good. This is like a speed run. I mean, it says I've been live for 34 minutes. I know 10 minutes of that was queuing. So what is that? 20, 24 minutes took me while I'm sitting here yakking. Um, all right. So on the power supply, you guys need to make sure you check this on all your printers. You got this little switch here. Okay. They usually come set to 230. Like when you buy a power supply from us too, they'll come set to 230. You got to put it on to 115 or 110, whatever's closest to your wall voltage. 
So be mindful of that. But that's it. We're we're together. Everything's together. Let's uh that eccentric is way too tight. Shocker. There are dual eccentrics on this. There's one on this side and one on the other, so that's nice. So let me just adjust this one here. So it's not too tight. That one's a little too tight. Now we're going to check the belt tension too on all these. Is there an eccentric on the X? There is, and it's way too tight, way too tight. And they need to check these at the factory, like all these companies, because if you set it too tight and it sits in the box for months, that's just sitting the bearing at too much of a load, which will eventually screw the bearing, um, which will then lead to poor quality prints. So that's a little too far. This wrench is kind of a pain because it's so damn big. Yeah, I feel a flat spot in the bearing. Son of a bitch. Why can these companies not learn? Like... Almost every printer, it's got eccentrics on it. They over-tighten the shit out of it. You can see here. See how it's like stopping right there? It's, yeah. Okay, that's too loose. I'm going to go back just a little. Just a little. I feel like the adjustment on this eccentric is very, very aggressive. Like, just moving it a little bit makes it go too far. All right, we're feeling, we're feeling good now. All right, now let's check the bed eccentrics because this has V-slot wheels on it. The eccentrics, it does have them. They're on the other side. So they're on these wheels here. That's too loose, too loose. I'd rather have too loose than too tight from the factory because, like I said... If they are too tight for an extended period of time, you can damage the bearings. So what I'm doing is I'm feeling this and I'm just adjusting it. And I'll see if I can show you here. So when I'm adjusting the eccentric, okay, you want to have it so it's loose enough or tight enough so you if you put your finger on here you can break it loose like this one's actually a little too tight I went a little too far with that one so you should be able to break it loose but when it rolls it should move so now if I move these you can see that they roll with the extrusion um, or with the carriage I should say and we should have all four of these rolling at the same time, which we do. All right. So last adjustment I want to do before we fire this up is the Y belt tension because you see this? That's a floppy dick. We don't want floppy dick belts. You want nice, nice firm, firm ones. Okay, that's too floppy. No one likes a floppy belt, okay? So let's go ahead and loosen up these adjustments here. So this is the tensioner on the front here, and we're going to loosen the four screws up. So there's one on each side here, one on each side here. Pull it forward, hold it in place, and then tighten these back down. So um, I was like, what is pinging me? DHL is sending me text notifications, which means we have inventory coming in. Yay. All right. So now I should be able to loosen this. Do I need to go a little more? I feel like I need to go a little more. Can I? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk this towards me. Okay. Still a little too loose. I'm going to pull a little more. See how it springs back? It's not all flapping about. So 
that's pretty good tension there. Just go a little bit, a little bit further. Okay, and I'm holding this while I'm tightening these down. Okay, because if you let it go, it's going to go back to the position it was because the belt is pulling on it. So hold it and tighten it down. All right, so that's not going anywhere now. I'll tighten up the last one. Nice and smooth. All right. Just rub the belt a bit and it'll stiffen up. <laughs> uh, you sound like an expert, Blasto. Well, I'm pretty sure you are an expert. <laughs> uh Mm. All right. Let's see. Let's go ahead and plug it in. Oh, let's turn it on. V0.0.2. It says MZ 2.0. Well, let's see. Let's see if everything works. Uh, everything looks like it's connected, so let's find out. Oh, yeah, let me check the... X-Belt tension feels good. It's weird that the, the Y was just like flapping about in the breeze there. This menu has like nothing. It just says prepare and control. Um, we are going to uh, we are going to put our firmware on this. We're going to see if it has a bootloader because the Mega Zero 1 uh, has a bootloader. I'm glad you got my, my joke there, Blasto. I was pretty sure you have stiffened many belts in your day. <laughs> Although, one thing I do want to say is that gantry is not, uh, it's definitely not, not level whatsoever. So, it's like an Ender 3. Let me see if I can just kind of, there we go. I saw it flex a little bit. That looks better just eyeballing it. Which, that's important if you have an ABL system. You want to make sure that the distance between the bottom of this and the frame on both sides are the same um, and I do actually have leveling blocks that I have in my tools drawer here so okay well initial homing passed let me uh, can I disable steppers yeah it has an option all right what I'm gonna do is actually tighten the the bed down and we're going to go through the leveling process. We'll see if it actually has the assisted leveling or not. Um, but we do want to start. It does have directions on how to do it. So hopefully, hopefully it has a assisted leveling, which we do have in our firmware for this printer. And we'll also be able to see if it has a bootloader on it. Like I said, the V1 had a bootloader on it. Use my leveling stickers. They require me to go get them. Um, all right, so let me home all again. And we're going to do... It does have level corners, so... We're going to do that. Let's see. Oh, uh, there we go. How many of you guys have uh, taken a look at our store in the last couple of days? Because um, I made some revisions to the shop. <laughs> I appreciate that coffeeology. Um, pretty much all my stream tips uh, go to my uh, my caffeine budget. <laughs> Speaking of which. I mixed this up. I mixed up some of the mythic melon here and then like just forgot about it. Ah. All right. Just leveling the bed. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Come on, grab. Grab. There it is. A 
luckily it looks like they kept the same mount like hot end mount as the uh v1 so that should mean that the abl mount we have for the v1 will fit the v2 although my memory could be deceiving me i can go back and look And we're going to go back around one more time. Because now we're too close over here. Way too close there now. Uh, easy ABL. Sh well, easy ABL will be able to go on this. The question is. Like I was saying, will the V is the V1 hot end the same setup as the V2? I believe it is. But I want to pull up my stream from the V1. And look, the V1 is out in our shop right now. Okay, that feels good. Just doing a final check here. I can go a little tighter. All right, I'm happy with that. So I'm going to go to, uh, we're going to auto home everything, and then I'm going to make sure everything heats. So I'm going to preheat PLA. Here's one thing I don't like. You see these wires are just like in the way of the bed. I do not like that. Cable management needs some work on here. I don't remember having this issue with the, the V1. For now, I'm just going to set it up on top of here. Put some tension on there. It's a little loosey-goosey. All right. We're going to see if it heats. I told it to heat. Which power supply is this one? This is uh, just some generic one. We'll test the grounding and stuff. Uh, I'm going to bet it's probably 24-volt PSU. I actually did not check, and the label is now facing away, but I'm willing to bet it's 24-volt. Um, the Mega Zero V1 was uh, 12 volt, so we're just gonna let that we're just gonna let that uh, go ahead and come up to temp. I'm gonna grab a roll because I do not print with the samples. Screw the samples. Um, you know what? I gotta use this up, so we're just gonna load this coax roll here. Should also be able, I should also be able to get the filament sensor working on here, too. Because we have the filament sensor working on the uh, the Mega Zero V1 as well. And it, like I said, looks to be the same board. Alright, so let's see how easy it is to load. That's not going in. Did I over-tighten the tension? Let's see. Okay, it's grabbing. Uh, this filament roll is very, very used. Um, this was a five-pound spool from GoX. As you can see, it doesn't quite fit on there too well. But it'll do for the video. The filament is good shit. So. All right, let's see. I am going to purge this out, so I'm going to go to prepare... Move, axis, extruder, and we're going to purge out. I usually do like 100 millimeters. Oh, man, they have that yeaten, like, really fast. I don't know if you see how fast it's purging, but it is really fast. Um, It's doing it, though. Oh, there it goes. We uh stuttered a little bit.
they should definitely slow it down. Well, when I put the R firm around it, it won't be able to push it that fast. That's crazy speeds. All right, let's see. Prepare main. No SD card. Refresh. Oh, there it is. Uh, we got owl.gcode. That's all we have. Owl.gcode. All right, we're going to print owl.gcode. It says bed heating. Well, we're already at heated temp, so... Next thing it should say is extruder heating. Yep. Um, I am going to bump the print temp up because this is coax, and coax likes to run hotter. So I'm going to go ahead and put it up to 220. Um, 220 should be fine. But, uh, yeah, coax typically likes hotter temperatures. I've noticed that with a lot of U.S. plastics because coax is made right here in the U.S. of A., Merca. Um but in all seriousness, they're filament's good stuff. So if you guys are looking for filament that just is consistent, the colors are good, um, highly recommend checking out Coax. That's what we use for most of our um, most of our printing here, if not almost all of it. Um, there are ones that we buy bulk supply from. So I've been very happy with them. All right, it's waiting for the extruder to heat. Uh, they definitely did not PID tune this hot end or even have decent values in the defaults because it's uh it's all over the place we're seeing i'm seeing like a two to three degree swing actually more than that now it's reading two i have it set to 220 it's reading 223 and it got up to two uh 25 all right it's doing some weird raise thing now hatchbox is just chinese filament it's nothing special oh hey look at my bed is Relatively level. Let's see. Do they have baby stepping? They do. Shout out to them for having baby stepping in natively. That's a nice feature. Because I'm a little too close. But instead of canceling the print, I can just move it up a little bit. Maybe even a little more. That looks good. All right, we'll switch over to print cam. And we'll let this, uh, we'll let this go. This does have Allegro drivers on it, the 4988s. So it is not a silent board, which is fine. Um... As far as I know, like, the enders and stuff are not coming with those standard. You have to upgrade it. But we're printing. Does Coax have decent PETG? I don't print a ton of PETG, but I have printed uh, quite a few spools of theirs when we have needed it, and it's been great. Uh, Atomic Filament also has good PETG. I don't know if you guys noticed, but at our on our site now, I actually added a link or, like, a menu to the main page that says filament and on the drop down there's coax and atomic because those are our two favorite companies um they're not affiliate links we don't get any money from referring people to them i just want to help support another small business that's u.s based so i wouldn't put the links on there if i didn't think they were good stuff yeah the ender 3v2 has silent drivers by default, but the Ender 3, unless they recently changed something, which I wouldn't put it past them, um, the Ender 3, as far as I know, comes with the 4988 drivers still. I feel like something has to go wrong. This went together too easily. What do you guys think? The smoke is from the douche flute, not not the printer. In case ever, anybody is wondering. Some people get confused like that. They didn't realize or they join in. They're like, oh, there's smoke. Nope, just the douche flute. I 
I think I will put some music on. What do you guys think? Some music to to chill out to while we're we're watching this print. You nerds. Let's see here. What do I got here? I got I got all the albums up uh, from my buddies over at From Zero to Z. So let's go ahead and put one on here. Yeah. Next person, that I, I'm no, I'm not doing a Voron build because I have no time for that. I would much rather modify an Ender Six, which we will be getting to. That's next up in my queue. I'm just manually focusing this, so yeah, no, the layers look good so far. The V1 printed really nice too. There we go. That should be a pretty good focus point. Yeah, so here's here's the thing. There wasn't a rant. I mean, there's really not much I have to complain about on this. Uh, we'll see once we get into the electronics side. I'm sure we'll see some uh, fuckery there. I already swore on the stream at the beginning. So, fuck it. <laughs> uh, I do not recommend buying Big Tree Tech's products unless you want something that's going to work for a couple months and then you'll never get warranty on it. Or if they do get back to you, you're okay with one to two to three to four week response times. Um, as far as I know, um, I did check. I thought initially like our easy board would fit in here or even like some of the Creality boards, but the mounting pattern for the holes is just different enough where it doesn't fit, which sucks. Um, you would have to print an adapter bracket, like design and print an adapter to change the board out in this. That's the one downside I will say, just because the Ender 3 is such a big community, um, you got companies like us that make upgrades for it you can do all sorts of cool stuff with the enders and it's really easy to do this one does have a heated bed that's what the v2 is so the v1 is basically the same printer it just doesn't have a heated bed it's a little cheaper and the v2 uh, has a heated bed and i do want to note uh, mechanically this one has the a 2040 rail that the bed rides on um, whereas the V1 has the dual linear rails, um, or not linear rails, linear rods. Um, so, but I would expect the same print quality on both of these because the hot end is the same setup. The extruder is the same setup. And while we're watching this print and you guys are jamming out, um, I'm going to pull up my video from the V1 and double check to see if the hot end is any different. Because if it is, then I'm going to have to design a V2 mount um, for the easy ABL because I am going to be putting one on this. And then uh, if it's the same, then hell yeah. Less work, the better. I'm scrubbing through the video right now to see if I can get a clear shot of the hot end because uh, that printer is out in the shop right now. So I do not have it in my office here. But it's been doing well as far as I know. I haven't had any complaints from them. They said it's been running off print jobs, no issue. So let me see. I think I found a shot where the hot end's going. Let's see.
Yeah, it has uh, it has the same hot end setup. So the mount for the Mega Zero V1 will work with this one too. It looks like. Now that stringing there. Oh, or is that stringing or under extrusion? I just noticed that. Oh. Oh, I think that's just how it's sliced. This is sliced weird. Yeah, I do not like how this is sliced. Let me do this. I'm going to cancel this. And I'm going to slice up a Benchy. How's that? The layers look pretty even, though. But whoever sliced this over at any cubic did not know what they were doing. Now, this is a super special sheet made in my own factory that I own in China. Mr. Lightspeed. That was a joke. You guys are out of the loop. <laughs> I'm going to slice up a bench here right now. Let's see. And we're going to print over USB. Yeah, concentric. Whoever slices this has no idea what they're doing. All right, let's see. Let's go over here. I should already have a Mega Zero profile. Yes, I do. Mega Zero, uh, we aren't going to do 15% infill. I'm going to do 10. And let me pull up, uh, pull up my search everything. Let's see here. 3D Benji STL, print farm test. Boom. I always got that Benji on, on standby. <clears throat> Yeah, I'm going to have to... I want you guys down for a hangout stream tonight. Like, just kind of a casual where we shoot the shit. I'll probably do a stream yard so other people can jump in. Any Anybody? Bueller? Bueller? Let's see. Go to G here. Benchy.g code. Export it. All right, let's go back to arm cam. Uh, Solval is okay. I, I would appreciate if you bought the 427 board from us because we do carry it and our price should be the same or less. And we also carry the EMI filter board, which we designed here. I'm not aware of anybody else that copied it yet. Um, I say yet because it'll probably happen. Uh, but those boards have issues with electrical interference. So especially if you're putting on Ender 5, you're going to need that EMI board. And we have it as an add-on uh, for $2.00. For ours, if you buy the board, I do, do want to plug this because I did set this up as kind of an incentive to purchase the board from us. Um, you can get the board with the EMI filter here. So here, so our we're, it's thirty nine bucks with it, or thirty nine bucks from us. And then if you want to get the filter board, it's two bucks extra. And also, if you want technical support you can actually add tech support on where we if you have any questions with hooking it up or setting the firmware up uh you get your our standard support just like you would with like an easy board or easy abl uh but you can also opt out of the support by clicking no so yeah we do carry the 427 this replaced the melzy board um but like i said if you guys if you guys are ordering from us um i would probably just get the filtering board stock because if you buy it separately uh, we do sell it separately from the board. You're going to be paying eight bucks um, if you buy this board separately from the board. So, just wanted to point that out. I, I wanted to have this as like a little little bonus here. Um, it's five bucks off, or actually more than that. What is that? Eight? It's six dollars off. So, but if you guys did purchase a board from somewhere else and you have the issue, um, and this is the issue here, there's actually a video showing it on the product page here. Um, where it just cycles through the menu, this little PCB plugs on and fixes that problem. So, and we're the only ones that sell it because we're the ones who designed that. Um, all right. So let's go ahead and restart the print here. I'm print from SD, refresh. And now we got 3D Banchi .g code. So I'm going to go ahead and heat the nozzle at the same time here just manually going to tune because i still haven't set s3d up to do the simultaneous heating i really need to do that um but i don't have it set up is this printer home to min or max min min on both min on max min on y min on z 
Min 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 min. What time? I'm. I. It would probably be later in the evening. Probably like eight or nine. I gotta see if uh, Samantha wants to hang out tonight. We spent some time together last night, so I might be off the hook. <laughs> Not that I don't like spending time with my wife, but I. I feel like we're overdue for just kind of a casual hangout stream. I got a ton of stuff that I can be working on and hanging out with everybody. So, let's see here. We're just waiting. We are at 178 on the hot end. Bed's heated. The bed does heat up pretty quick. I would say it heats up about the same as, uh, same speed as Ender 3. I was about to tag Samantha in chat, but she's not watching the stream. My own wife doesn't even watch my own streams. You know what? Maybe I won't hang out with her tonight. She can't even can't even watch her own husband's streams. I'm offended. I'm so triggered right now. Can you guys tell? Are you talking about the firmware hangout stream where I was like two glasses of whiskey in and then got all the anet stuff uh, sorted out? Although I did overlook one thing. Um, I had to patch it. When I copied over the uh, code that runs the home offset section um, or setting, um, I didn't. I forgot that I changed it on the new firmware to a different variable. So I had to go back and patch it. But that's all patched now. Um, I am probably going to need to baby step this because I did last time. So I'm just going to preemptively step it up to like 0.15. Um, I could probably put in... Well, I'd have to print the mount. Although the mount doesn't take that long to print. All right, let's see. Apparently my slicer, I have this set to cruise pretty quick. Let's, let's see. I'll make sure I get enough squish on here. They're definitely using an older version of Marlin because the baby stepping is not taking effect right away. There's like a delay. The newer versions of Marlin, it's almost instant. So. But we'll get back in there. How's that? Yeah, I will give it this. The Mega Zero uh, does seem to print very quickly. And I, I would attribute that to it coming with a geared extruder out of the box. Um, which is never a bad thing. Because the Creality one, the Creality, like the Ender 3, does not come with a gear extruder. It comes with a very basic one. And for most people, it's fine. But I do definitely like, uh, this is like a basically a Bontech knockoff uh, that comes with this. I do like it better than uh, Creality stuff. So, like I said, the only downside is that, like, the, because it's it's a now yet another non-standard board uh, layout, Swapping the board is is more of a pain, um, and I don't see foresee like I I know we're not gonna take the time to, um, you know, make a drop in board for this. Maybe maybe some other companies will, um, you know, and it's a twelve eighty four p CPU, so I will rag on them for that. Like, you know, you got the Ender three shipping with thirty two bit processors now, um, and as far as I know, this is still using eight bit. And like I said, it prints the eight bit boards still print, um. I forgot the giveaway again. It's not. I'm sorry. I will open it up right now. Thanks for reminding me. I'm I'm going to write a checklist and put it on my monitor to uh, kick on like my pre-flight checklist. I said that last time. Um, <laughs> Dominic. <laughs> well, there's, there's no such thing as the Wham Bam factory. They're using the same place that we're using for our plates um i don't know why they charge more they're greedy i don't know our plates are almost half the price and it's the same thing so now i can actually say that our texture plates are the same thing as wham bams except with less marketing wink so and it's funny because i uh, i call them out on on twitter about it because they're telling people they own the factory when i've talked to the owner of the factory because i have a long-standing relationship with them because we've been buying from them for years um and he confirmed no we did not sell the factory. They don't own it. And here's another thing. If you're a U.S. person like me, you cannot own property or companies in China. 
So him him going around telling everybody that they own their factory is a straight up lie. So unless Wham Bam's a Chinese company, but as far as I know, they're they're incorporated in Florida. And uh, Peter and uh, th- some other uh, there's a lady's name on the filing documents. Um, like they can't own the factory. He could have somebody over there that you know does work for them on his behalf. Um, you know in China, but I mean, we have the same kind of thing too. I have agents that we use over in China that make sure, uh, you know, all our products are built over there correctly, that, you know, things are getting handled correctly, that QC is done. And then we do further more QC on our plates here and stuff here. So, um, whereas they're doing everything overseas and then shipping it to, um, and then shipping it to a fulfillment center in California. So whereas we get everything sent to here to us in Indiana, uh, we do all of our quality checks here with people here in the U.S. Um, and then we ship it out directly ourselves, whereas they're doing fulfillment and stuff. So their only line of QC is their people over in China that are checking it before it gets shipped there. Whereas our stuff, we check every single plate we send out. We check all of our products before we send them out. So, um, you know, you're getting better quality checking from us and the plates are almost half the price. So... Yeah, and it's funny because I and I've, I think I've said this before. I have a screenshot from uh, the owner of Wham Bam where he was talking down about our supplier, but now they're using them. You know, he was like, "Oh, our stuff is so much better," but now you're using the same supplier as us. Hmm, that's really uh, really interesting. I thought our supplier was terrible. Uh, the giveaway is open. Um, it's giveaway.th3dstudio.com. And the form is open. Um, I don't know if we have any 235s our meals, but you can always email. If you guys are interested in what we call B-Stock, those are ones that have cosmetic blemishes um, but are otherwise 100% functional, uh, just shoot an email to streams, S-T-R-E-A-M-S, at th3dstudio.com, and Aaron will check that. But if you guys want to enter the giveaway, you can do once per stream. Yeah, this is printing really nice. What surprise this month? It will be a 3D printer. I'm not going to tell you guys what. Yeah, this is printing pretty good. I'm pretty happy with it. Refresh the form. It's definitely open. You might have to refresh your browser cache. Maybe it's caching it. It should be open. I'm looking at it right now. I just opened a private window. Let's see. Private giveaway. And yeah, it's open. So your browser might be caching it. So double check that. How funny would that be if we gave away an A9A8? You guys just planted that in my head. Maybe one of the giveaways I'll do an ANET A8. That would be hilarious. I don't even know if they're still making them. I feel like the ones that are out there are probably just ones that are like old stock they haven't sold through yet. Um, the A8 Plus, as far as I know, is still being manufactured. The infill's weird. I am running it faster. If I slowed it down, the infill would be more consistent that's just it it's just running fast the faster you crank your speed up and i i gotta see what i slice this at because i did slice it kind of hot um what did i set this at no not that hot only 60 i'm willing to bet their acceleration values are actually pretty high which is why it's moving so fast so it's actually able to hit um so it's actually able to hit the higher speeds but it's looking pretty good What's funny is I I saw uh, Lightspeed. I saw you applied or replied, and there was one from Peter himself. But uh, he uh, he he apparently has the our our company account blocked. <laughs> That's kind of funny.
I don't know if Lightspeed is still in here or not. Did I get more work done on my Nano Leafs? I changed to a different version. Um, these are a little bit smaller. And I think I'm going to go with these. I do have to tune my settings a little bit better because uh, I was getting some stringing. But this was on Bertha and my settings are not dialed in that well yet. Um, but I do have I do have 12 of these printed. I think what I'm going to do is just print the bases and assemble a couple of them and see how they come out. And see if I want to move forward with this particular design um, or not. But this is one layer thick. Um, you might be able to see it. Do I have a... F oh. Well, my phone's in my... Oh, wait. Hang on. Hang on. Is Taze Light charged? Taze Light is charged. So you can see here, it does transfer light pretty good. So we'll see how well this works. The Ender 3 V3. Don't give Preality any ideas. They've already got so many printer models out. It's ridiculous. Oh my god! Just get a knockoff printer. Maybe I'll buy what? Maybe I'll buy Woody. I'll buy a Woody printer. You guys remember Woody? Woody's still here in my office, and I still use it occasionally. It's like my last resort printer. It does print well, um, but if I need to run off a ton of jobs, I will fire it up and run off jobs, and it prints prints great after the upgrades. Yeah, this is printing pretty good. It looks, I mean, it looks like it's printing as good as the V1, which is good because I liked the V1 a lot. The Ender 3 Pro Pro. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's, I'm happy with it. Let's see. Let me see how the layers look. Uh, they look as good as I would expect them to, which is good. They're even, no complaints so far. Hey, at least, uh, dubbed out, at least um, UPS gave you the courtesy of notifying you that your stuff was going to be delayed. USPS is just like, yeah, it'll get there when it gets there. Um, we are still seeing delays with USPS. I do want to put that out there. We still have the notice on our site. So, uh, Edward Bennett, what do I think of MakerBase boards? Uh, I have, we're, we're going to start selling the SGN L. If you guys notice, there's actually a placeholder in the shop for that. Um, I'm just waiting on... The order to get filled. Um, I think the SGNL V2, which is what we're going to be carrying, and I have firmware out for it already. Um, I think that's a good price. It's a good board for the price. Um, it's better. They use better parts on it than Big Tree Tech stuff. The voltages are more stable. Um, I have the version one in Barney that's been in there for at least at least nine months now, almost a year maybe. I have to look when I put it in. I think it was back in May. So. Well, they May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December, February, January, February. So nine months. Yeah. No issues with that. I put the SGN LV2 in my AM8 and it's just working. I had tons of issues. Um, I had tons of issues with the SKR 1.4 turbo. So I pulled that out and put the SGN LV2 in and it's everything worked. All my issues went away. I had lockups with the 1.4 turbo. I had issues with the uh, accuracy on the easy ABL on there, which was not the probe. It ended up being the board. So switch the board out. Everything started working correctly. So they're definitely more stable. I feel like, and I've said this before, I feel like MKS, which is maker base. I feel like they know where to do the cost cutting that doesn't kneecap the product or make it terrible. Um, that's not infill. That's actually the top layer. So, and that would be better if the cooling was better. This is just a standard fan, uh, but that's a top layer. I think I'm doing five top layers. I got to check my slicer profile. Let me see. Layers four. Okay. And if I did more infill, it would look better, but I, I usually like running Benchies at 10% just to see how it comes out because that gives us a good idea of how good the cooling is. And I would say the cooling's average. Probably, it's about the same as an Ender 3. 
So there we go. There's the fourth layer. You can see it looks looks better now. Now once you get some top layers on there, uh, they usually sort themselves out. Yeah, I do like this pink. This is from Coex. Um, what's the actual name of it? I think they only have one pink. Um, it's the magenta pink from Coex. Which, if you guys go to our website, there's a filament menu. If you hover over that, it's a drop-down, and there's a link to Coex and Atomic. Those are my two favorite filament companies. And they're both U.S.-based. They make good stuff, so... All right, well, are we going to let the Benchy finish? Let me see. Can I do a pull? Hang on. I think pull. Let me see if I can remember the Nightbot thing. Pull new. Let the Benchy finish. I think yes, no. Will this do it? Is that the correct syntax? Hey, did I get it right on the first try? Hell yeah, I did. There you go. Let's see. Vote. Go ahead and vote. Let's see what the vote is. If the Benchy's going to finish... Actually, I'm going to do this. You guys vote. I'll check it in uh, when I come back. I'm going to go use the restroom um, so you guys can watch the Benchy print and uh, listen to the tunes from our friends over at From Zero to Z. So I'll be right back.
go. We're back. I'll drop the music back down here. And we should be good. Um, all right. It's coming out great. I'm, I'm very happy with the print quality so far. Like I said, the V1 of this printer printed very well. And it looks like everybody wants the Benji to finish. So we're going to let it finish. We're only at... We're only at 20% of the way. Oh no. Oh no. That's going to be a while. A while. Yeah. What is that? Probably, I don't know, probably 40 minutes or so, I want to say. It'll probably go by quick if we are just sitting here chatting. Um, I do got to let Aaron know. It looks like we got two shipments from DHL coming in today. Which is good, because that means we have inventory coming in. Yay! I'm going to ping him right now. Let him know. How many did you guys, uh, how many of you guys, uh, picked up one of the new easy plugs that we launched on Saturday? I know we saw, we sold quite a bit. I should have, I should have ordered more. Um, but I'm gonna have to wait till my supplier gets back from their Chinese holiday. Yeah, I'll bump the speed up. I mean, it's printing really nice. So let me see. I can always bump the print temp up. Let's see. Let's go to 150, 144, 149, 150. Let's let's push it a little bit. See where it's going. So, yeah, if you guys do want an easy plug, you should order sooner than later. Um, I know we still have a decent amount left, but we did sell a lot in the first couple of hours. Um, I'm checking to see what our stock levels are at on them. Let's see. Let's see here. Where is my inventory? Uh, products, all products. Let's see here. Oh, I don't get why people, people do this. They leave a, re instead of contacting support for a defective product, they'll leave a review complaining about it instead of actually submitting a ticket. If you guys have an issue with something, contact our support team and we will send you replacements and get you straightened out. Um, that's what you should be doing. So I just want to, just wanted to point that out here. Um, I'm going to convert this guy's post here to a ticket and get them all sorted out but it's just like come on like contact the support they'll get you taken care of I'm gonna forward this on to the guys here There we go. All right, let's see where we're at on the Easy Plug stock. Easy Plug. Where am I at? So I've got, we started out with 500 total uh, for both versions, and we're down to like 300. So still got a decent amount left, but I'm hoping that'll last us through it would have to last us through probably mid March, late March, because they do take about a month to get a batch of 500 made and then shipping everything. But right now, like I said, because of the, I think it's a spring festival, 
um, a lot of Chinese places are just completely closed, if not all of them. The whole country basically shuts down for that time period. I think it's like the 8th to the 20th. Um, I could be wrong, but that's like the dates I've been seeing from our suppliers where they told us like, hey, we're going to be closed. Um, we'll be gone during that time because of the, uh, uh, the, the spring festival holiday. Um, I thought I already gave uh, Cyberdeck. Oh, you mean on the stream? Yeah. So if you guys have been, if you guys are familiar with the Cyberdeck, it's basically like this little community that makes these custom, uh, like, hackery type computers. Um, they're usually based around like single board computers, like Raspberry Pis. Uh, we are sponsoring their event. They have it's called VertCon, um, and I will post the info here. Give that a give that a check out. Um, it's free to do. It's a virtual, uh, like virtual event. So, but they're having competitions and stuff. You can enter in to, you know, be part of the competition. We're putting up uh, an Easy Flex system, and then if you don't have a printer, which I'm assuming if you guys are watching, you probably do, but there are people that don't have 3D printers. Um, for the people that win that don't have a 3D printer, um, we'll actually we're actually going to print their design for them and send it out to them. So, but give that, give that a check out. If you guys are into DIY stuff, um, it's really cool. They have their, they have like a build guide and whatnot. Um, I'm trying to find like, they'll, let me see here. I'm going to switch over while this is going. Cause there's nothing exciting really happening on the printer. Um, it's doing really well. Uh, but this is the Cyberdeck, uh, cyberdeck.cafe is the website, but they do post people's builds like look at this like that looks awesome like that's crazy this is a new one let's see here so this guy designed and printed it oh this is like step by step jesus i want to see the final i want to see the actual physical version of it or is it not in here oh it's not in here, but he's got it. Uh, he's got it here. It looks like this is all 3D printed. I like this color. This color is very accurate for a Commodore style co color. Um, but yeah, they have all these different projects, and there's really no constraints on it. It's just building a you know a computer that you like. Yeah, this is all 3D printed. He's got it. Looks like a Pi 3B in here. Yeah, 3B, not even the plus. It's older 3B in here. It's really cool. So they basically just make these little tiny, you know, purpose-built computers. And they post all the build logs on here of people's different builds. You can see they all look completely different. It's just really cool to see what people do with their builds. Um, there's guys, too, that make ones that are, like, really useful for troubleshooting and stuff. Um, where they have, like, network switches and multimeters and stuff on there. Um, so it's kind of like a grab and go type of thing. Like this is a, uh, uh, I believe this is a Pi Zero based one. Um, I thought there was more on here. Cause I know I saw pictures. Oh, there it is. It's just, there's like a big uh, span, but yeah, it's really cool. So if you guys are into like building kind of like little niche things, um, definitely give them a, give them a check out or shout or whatever. Um, but yeah, it's it's awesome, um, and a lot of this stuff is 3D printed. So yeah, check it out. Like, cause there's a ton of different builds. It's just so so cool. Um, I wish I had time to do stuff like this. But yeah, definitely definitely check them out. Let's go back to the uh, let's go back to the the camera here and see how we're doing. Even though I have the speed cranked up, it's actually still coming out pretty good. It's so one of the benefits of the geared extruders. Um, you can just push more plastic, and it'll uh, it'll usually do it. Let me check chat here. Um, would it be possible to get a dual plug with energy monitor version made for the easy plug? Um, I can check. I'm willing to bet the manufacturer we're using to get our plugs made has a dual plug version, or they can make us one. Um, 
it wouldn't be hard. Definitely could do that with a uh, still keeping with the ESP8266 platform. Um, uh, Dave, I think I saw Dave. Does Octopi think? What's Octopi think? Um, you can use the Easy Plug with Octoprint. That's what we we're originally like marketing them for is for use with an Octoprint setup. Um, you can use them standalone. They do have a standalone web interface where you can pull it up and, you know, check the stats on the plug and turn it on and off. Uh, for you home automation guys, um, it does support MQTT. It's running Tasmoda. Um, so you can integrate it with Home Assistant. And like I said, there's no there's no cloud stuff with it. So, you know, it's not going to natively talk to, um, to like your Google Home or your Amazon Echo devices. Uh, but you can get them to work with them if you set up like if you set up Home Assistant on your network and then tie Home Assistant into it. So my goal is to have a plug that was completely locally controlled, running open source firmware, so we don't have to worry about you know any unscrupulous code being run in the background. Um, you know I like knowing what's on my network. I've had too many devices, um, and they're usually Chinese devices, where people have been connecting into the device and scanning my network. Like I had a security camera that was from this random company. I was sent to review it. And then there was literally someone telling into the camera and then running scans on my network. And after that, that all my, all my cameras now they're all isolated. Um, I do have, uh, I do have some smart devices like IOT devices on my home network, but they're ones that I have flashed with the open source firmware, so I don't have to worry about them calling home um, and potentially giving someone else outside of my network access to my system. Uh, it's a very big security concern. There's been a lot of DDoS attacks that have leveraged compromised devices um, as ways to perform DDoS attacks. So um, I don't know if you guys know, but my background before I started TH3D uh, was in uh, IT, so project management, um, IT management, that kind of stuff. So I'm very well aware and conscious of security issues and not putting devices on my network that I'm not able to, you know, qualify and inspect. So, um, oh yeah, I forgot about that. Um, Mac J, the Hue emulation, um, that is in the firmware. I've never used it because I don't do the Philips Hue stuff. Um, I just directly connect everything. So my 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 IoT stuff, my smart home stuff, the way I have everything set up is everything talks to Home Assistant. And if I want a device accessible through like my, I have Google Homes here. If I want something accessible through Google Home, um, I have Google Home talk to it through Home Assistant. So Home Assistant is my central communication point for all of my, you know, my door sensors, my lights, um, you know, any kind of sensor. If it's a smart home device, it talks to Home Assistant directly. Um, and then Google talks to Home Assistant. So if that makes sense. So when I, you know, tell my Google device to turn on my lights, it actually sends a request to Home Assistant and then Home Assistant sends it to the device. So. Um, but yeah, I have not, I have not tested the Hue emulation on Tasmoda because I know it does have... Um, let me pull up one of the plugs here. I'm trying to find which one. I have one on my network. Well, I have a couple of our, our plugs on our network already. Um, I took some of the prototypes and put them into service to make sure that they're reliable. Um, I'm trying to remember which one, what the IP address is. I got to pull up my, uh, let me pull up my network management here. I don't know if, uh, I don't know if that'll natively integrate with Google or Amazon. Um, unless they have a way to talk directly to the device on your network. I could be wrong. I haven't tested it. So, yeah, I don't have any Amazon Echo devices. I used to be on Amazon Echo. Um, and then I got rid of them in favor of Google's solution because I like the casting feature. I use that a lot. Um... Hang on, I have one on my resin printer lights, and I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember which one it is on. Uh, let's see here. 
That's a duet. That's not it. Where is my... Where are my resin printer lights? Should be on my IoT network. Trying to find it here while we're waiting for this to print. Because I'm curious to see if that just works and that does mean that they'll natively work. I just didn't want to advertise it since I haven't tested it myself. I'd rather tell people it doesn't support it and it does than tell them it does support it and it doesn't work reliably. Um, I'm just trying to find my... Damn it, what is... It's not static because it's talking over MQTT. I don't need to have it static if, since we're going over MQTT. Um, I think I found it, though. I think it's 193 on my network. Is this it? Yes, it is. Okay. Um, so here, I'll show you what I mean. So this is... I'm using one of these for my resin printer light. So I have a light in my resin printer enclosure, and this is one of uh, the easy plugs. You can see it's the V1. Um, so anyways... I think what you're talking about is the configure other. If you go in here, is this what you're talking about? Because I know it has emulation for uh, the Wemo and the Hue. I mean, let's just see. Let's let's see. Let me hit save and see if it pops up on the network. So like I can turn this on and yeah, it's turning on and off. I'm curious to see. Jerry's asking, I've been able to get my dad interested in any of your hobbies. Uh, not really. I've I've mentioned the printer stuff with him, but he's got he's got a ton of stuff going on all the time. Let's see, I'm opening my Google Home app. Let's see if it detects it. Cause sometimes it'll it'll pop up. Um Let's see, if I add a device settings. Oh wait, no, it's not it's been a while since I added a device. Hang on, setup. Damn it, how do I add? Oh, upper left hand corner. Set up a device. So I'm in my, my Google Home app here. Oh, it only works with Amazon devices? Well that's a that's that's disappointing. Let me see if it sees it. Set up a new device. New device. Next. Looking for devices. Let's see if it comes up. It's it's searching. Uh what am I setting up? Um I'm going to tell it I'm setting up a light bulb. I'm toggling it. Let's see. I wonder if the Wemo would work for... The Wemo emulation would work. Yeah, it's not... It's not seeing it. So let's see. Configuration. Configure other. Let's... Let's, uh... Let's have it emulate a Belkin Wemo. What's the recommended replacement fan for the Easy Pie Pro? Well, if you're still in warranty, contact us. We do have spares. So, um, let me see here. Configuration, configure other. All right, so let's see. Let's see if it detects the Wemo. I don't have any Amazon devices, so I can't. I can't test it. Let me switch back to the uh, the camera here. I'm going to tell it it's a plug. Yeah, no, Google's not seeing it. So what you're saying, I, I don't know if... Uh, it sounds like you're uh, familiar with the Tasmoda stuff. Um, so you're saying, though, Amazon can talk directly to it doing the emulation. If it's emulating a Hue bridge, I don't understand why... Google wouldn't see it. Let me let me try that again. Hue multi device main menu. Or is there other are there other options? So let me let me Google. Since we're waiting for this to finish printing. Hasmoda Google Home Hue Emulation. Let's see. Let's see what, what Google comes up with. Or sorry, I am actually using DuckDuckGo now, so. Let's see here. Let's see what it comes up with.
All the boomers are in here complaining about smart devices. Back in my day, you just put a bulb in and you turned it on. I should have worn my OK Boomer shirt. <laughs> so you're you're talking directly from Tasmoda then to the Amazon Echo devices. Maybe I'll have to pick up like an Echo Dot or something and just write some documentation on that. Um, I'm using I'm using DuckDuckGo and Brave for my browser. I do have Chrome installed. I only use it for the company stuff, but for my personal browser, I use Brave. Llama's over here. You damn kids and your smart things. We're actually, we don't use smart things here, Mr. Boomer. We use, we use Home Assistant because it's what all the cool kids use because it's open source. I do use Home Assistant. Home Assistant is, is awesome. If you guys want to, want to lose a ton of free time and kind of nerd out, go, go set up a Home Assistant installation. It's amazing. Let me see. So I have it set up as Belkin Wemo. I don't... Let me see. Let me see if I can tell it that I'm setting up a Wemo device. Work with Google. Home control. Linked services. Um, let's see. Didn't Wemo... Didn't they shut down like the Wemo stuff? Um, I know there was a bunch of stuff where they started charging for that. But I don't know if you could like link this to a Wemo account. Or I think that's just local... Yeah, see, it's asking me to create an account, which obviously I'm not going to have an account. It's just a local device. Let me see. Hue. Phillips Hue. It's probably going to ask me for an account then, too. Yep. Yeah. So, yeah, that, that won't work. That's a shame that it doesn't pick it up. That would be that would be awesome, because then you have local control. Um, have I moved to Z-Wave JS on Home Assistant? No, not yet. Um, I'm using, for the house, I actually have a separate... Um, Home Assistant installation that just runs Z-Wave to MQTT and it sends my Z-Wave network over MQTT to the main installation but out in the shop we have uh, their standard the old integration that they've since deprecated um, but I'm waiting for them to have a migration path from the old integration to the new one um, and once they have that then I will switch over to Z-Wave JS uh, it sounds like you might be using it if you are how is it working? Um, we do actually have a landline here. It's uh, I'm using one of those Obahai boxes with a Google Voice line, so we do have that. But it's a, it's still VoIP. Well, Llama, if you're having issues with using your phone as a regular phone, then you should probably switch over to an Android phone instead of an iPhone. So I will, uh, let's, let's, let's do some, since we're literally waiting for a Benchy to print, um, let's, let's talk about some home automation stuff. Um, I'm going to turn the emulation off on there cause I don't need that service running if I'm not going to be using it. Um, so let's, let's, let's go over some home automation stuff. Cause I do want to, I do want to get people's interest peaked about it. Um, because I think it's really good. Let's see here. And if Lightspeed, if you're still watching, I'm gonna ping you. Uh, I'm gonna ping you on the back end here. I'm just curious. Let's see. All right. Let's see. Okay, my notifications are off. All right, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some home automation stuff while we're uh, waiting for the Benji to finish. So. The first thing, uh, if you do, I think it's home-assistant.io is their website. Yes. So if you're really lazy and you want a fully managed device, 
they do have what's called the Home Assistant Blue, which is what my brother Doug went with. Um, they have it at multiple different places. Uh, Ameridroid is where you can get it from. This is a fully set up Home Assistant bundle. Um, I mean, we could even do stuff like this. Uh, but they have, like, their blue, which is this nice Home Assistant-themed case, which I think looks gorgeous. This is a uh, an aluminum case, um, but this runs on the Odroid N2 Plus board. So if you want something that you just get it, it's already pre-set up. They have these, but it looks like they're they're shipping um, in March. Is looks like it's how far back it's, uh, it's at. Um, maybe, I, maybe I should start building them. <laughs> I don't know. But you can get pre-set up ones, but you can also run a uh, Home Assistant on a Raspberry Pi board. So, um, highly recommend that you do a Pi 4 Model B 2 gig uh, of RAM or higher, and then a good power supply, 3 amp power supply. Um, and they do have links here. These are, these are uh, looks like these are Amazon links. So, you could reflash an Easy Pi if you got an Easy Pi laying around. You could reflash an Easy Pi, um, and we ship our Easy Pies all with Class 10 cards. Um, so yeah, but anyways, you want, you, you can start with a Raspberry Pi board, uh, get a 4B or higher, um, by higher, I mean the memory. So two gig or higher on there and then a good SD card. Now, um, there are things called high endurance SD cards and, uh, Samsung's one of the companies that makes them. They're pro endurance. These guys here, um, these are really good to use for Home Assistant because these are designed for high usage and you're definitely going to want that for Home Assistant. These are also fast too. So if you're going to put together a Home Assistant and install on a Pi, highly recommend going, um, highly re recommend going with like a higher quality SD card, one that's designed for, um, you know, high endurance. That's a, the term to search for. Um, basically, you, you download the image here for your device and you can see here they've got pre-built devices if you want something a little bit faster this is what we're running in the shop is we have an intel NUC, and you can just write this image to the nvme drive or an s or a sata ssd uh, but you can see here they have images for all the different versions here i would highly recommend going with a pi 4 um, i tried home assistant on a pi 3 it's very slow you'll quickly outgrow it um, but you just download the image you write it to the sd card with uh Bolina Etcher, like they say here, and you you plug the SD card in, you plug the Pi into your network, and then it'll come up, and like it says here, it'll prepare itself, and then you'll have a web interface. So I can show you really quick here. Let me, let me open this in another window here and drag it over. Let's see here. So this is my home assistant installation. I have a ton of stuff on here. Um, but you get an interface like this. You can actually install plugins and whatnot. Um, you see here, I've got some updates. Apparently, I just updated this last weekend. Um, but the updates are just as simple as clicking update. Not a big deal. But there's an add-on store here where you can add on different things to your home assistant installation. Um, you can even do ad blocking on your home assistant install. So if you're running like Pi Hole or AdGuard on a separate box, you can actually run it right on your home assistant box. Um, I do use AdGuard Home, but I have it in a virtual machine so it runs fast. This is actually running in a virtual machine using their image. So if you guys do have a server at home and you're running like Hyper-V or VMware, um, you can actually run it in a virtual machine. So this is actually running in a virtual machine. Um, I have like... This is the, the TH3D, oh wait, wrong one. The TH3D installation, which is much more simple. This is actually running on an Intel NUC and you can see um, it's it's pretty snappy. Um, and I'm using a bunch of different plugins. So you, it's very modular. Uh, but once you get it installed, you get an interface and you can start customizing it. And like, if I want to edit this, or let's say I want to add another button, you can just, just do that and add it. Uh, if I turn that on, it's gonna turn the siren on in the shop. Uh, probably shouldn't do that, but you can just add buttons just as, as simple as that. Um, I'm not going to actually add that cause I don't need to have a button for it. But like, if I turn this, if I do that, the light, one of the lights just shut off. The shop. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's a mod. They got an interface here, which you can pull up on your smartphone. It, it auto scales to the size of the screen, which is nice. 
Um, but you can basically make it what you want. Like I've got all sorts of different things here. This is for my living room. You can do multiple pages. I've got my garage doors integrated here with a uh, Sauna 4 channel device running Tasmoda. Um, you can see here if I turn this off, that's the light in my office here. Um, I also have all my other devices. So here's the LED cube. If I just do this, this is actually plugged into an easy plug and that shuts off the, the LED cube. Um, if I turn it back on, you'll see the little, uh, little sus guy light up and then the cube will boot up. Um, I have my Ecobee thermostats tied in. I've got Wi-Fi outlets tied in. So like if I go here, you can see here resin printer lights. This is the plug I was messing with and I just turned the lights off. So, but yeah. So anyways, it's a modular interface. You can do whatever you want with it. Um, I don't know why that just went unavailable. Oh, there it goes. It was thinking apparently. So, but you can tie all your smart home devices in here. So, but yeah, it's it's a very powerful platform. Like here for my, uh, I showed off when I was doing the, the humidor build. Um, let me turn the live stuff off so you guys can see. But you can see I've got monitoring of all my stuff here. Um, and this is running ESP Home. And I even have my cat litter boxes integrated. These are uh, litter robots, and someone wrote an integration to connect the litter robots to Home Assistant. So if I actually do this, it's going to start cycling them and clean the litter boxes. So it's it's pretty awesome. It's a very powerful platform. I'm just barely even. I'm just glossing over stuff right now. Um, Node Red is a plugin for Home Assistant to do automations. Now, Home Assistant has its own native automation platform, but I really like flows, and this looks like a lot, and it is, um, but you just kind of build on this. So these are like all my different flows. So like we have a motion sensor in the hallway. Um, so when the hallway motion sensor detects motion, it turns the lights on, um, and then after it goes to an off state, it starts a one minute timer, make sure that the motion is still off, and then it'll turn the lights off. So when I get up in the middle of the night, as soon as I open the door coming out of the bedroom, the lights turn on in the hallway, which is really nice. And then they shut off too. I have here another automation. I have a sensor on my patio door. When I open the patio door, if the sun is down, so if you set up your location stuff in Home Assistant, you can actually, it actually will know when it's sunrise and sunset. So I have an automation here that if the patio door is open and it's after sundown, it's automatically going to turn the patio lights on and then start a five minute timer. So it's nice. So when we let the dog out, um, when you let the dog out at night, you open the door and the lights turn on automatically. It's, it's convenient. Um, I also have automations here. We have little door sensors on our closet lights and I have a Z wave bulb in each of the closets. So you open our closet door, it turns on the light for you. And five minutes later, even if the door is still open, it will shut it off because my wife kept leaving the, uh, my wife kept, le kept leaving the closet lights on. So I decided to fix that with automation. <laughs> Um, but I have stuff too, like practical stuff here. So like we have a, we have an in-ground pool here and I have a Z-Wave controller for that in-ground pool, uh, for the pump. And I have it turn the pump on at 7 AM and then it turns it off at 6 PM. I also have my pool heater controlled with home assistant through, uh, an ESP home power device, which is a little ESP 8266 that I built with some relays. Um, and if you notice here, I have it turn the heater off and then wait 30 seconds before it turns the pool pump off. So that way it can get rid of the residual heat. Um, I've got a temperature sensor on the pool pump. So if it's running too hot, it'll shut the pump off. It'll send me a push notification to my phone and it'll turn off the heater and the pump to prevent damage to the pool pump. Um, if it's running too hot, because if it's running too hot, there's something wrong. Um, I have automations here. So we have two set points for a pool heater, 80 degrees Fahrenheit and 85. Um, it will check to make sure the pump is on because you don't want to turn it on. There are safety measures on the pump, on the heater itself. It will not actually turn on unless the pump's on because there's a pressure sensor, but I have additional checks in place. Um, so if you tell it to heat the pool to 80 degrees, it will send you a notification confirming that it was set. And then once the pool is actually at temperature, I have a sensor in the, uh, the PVC pipe monitoring the water temperature. Uh, once it's actually at temperature, it will then send you another notification letting you know that the pool is at temperature and ready for swimming. Um, you have see here, I have uh, automation here. So 
if someone manually turns a pump off because there is an override out there, it will automatically turn the, the relays off for the heater. And like I said, the heater itself has an override. I'm just adding in additional checks and safety checks to make sure that that, that heater, if for some reason its override fails, um, it's not going to be running the heater unless the pump's on. So you can do all this kind of stuff. What I recommend people doing is just getting all your devices connected to the network and get all your stuff connected into Home Assistant and just get all your stuff talking to Home Assistant and then you start tying it together with automations and it's way, way powerful. Um, once it's set up, it does actually make your life easier. I, I my, my wife appreciates it now. Originally, it was an annoyance, but now that everything's pretty stable, I got everything set up, uh, she does appreciate having it because uh, it does genuinely make our life easier. And one of the things was we put a sensor on our backyard gate where if it's open, and this is with any of the doors in our house, if it's left open for more than 30 seconds, it sends us a notification on our phones, and it will also make an audible voice announcement in our the main area of the house, letting, us, letting you know what door or if the yard gate's left open. And the reason I want that is if I go to let the dog out and the gate's open, I don't want the dog getting out of the yard. Um... Yeah, absolutely. Mac J, uh, Home Assistant Tutorials, Dr. Z's, DigiBlur, The Hookup, those are all good guys. Um, they know their stuff. I've watched a lot of their videos, especially when I was starting out. Um, I see Terminal Sandwich saying, wait, back up. You have a litter robot? Is it reliable? Uh, yes, I've had these units for five years. Um, we have two of their version threes, and I had a version two, but I gave that to one of my friends when we got the version threes. And the version threes have um the version threes have have uh, option for wi-fi and uh as far as i know when we bought them they were made they're they're made in the u.s i don't know if they still are as far as i know they're from michigan um i thought they were made in the u.s they were definitely when i bought them i don't know if they have it on here where it says uh, but either way we've had ours for five years now uh, we got these when they first came out and you can see here they have the litter robot 3 this is 449 they're not cheap but I can tell you um, I was hesitant to buy them but now that I have them it's absolutely worth it because I am we have four cats and two of these and I empty a bag of litter or two bags of litter one from each unit uh, once a week it's great um, but they do have the litter robot three, which is standalone. Um, but you can get the connect and they do have an upgrade kit. So let's say you have the three already, you can upgrade it to the connect. Um, but the connect is the Wi-Fi one. It's, uh, it's four ninety nine. I recommend if you're thinking about getting it and you want the Wi-Fi, which I do think is really nice. Cause they do have an app that gives you notifications when it's full and stuff. Um, I think it's worth the extra 50 bucks out of the gate, but like one of my litter robots I bought before the Wi-Fi version was out and they had an upgrade kit. I don't know if they still have it, um, but it wasn't that hard. Yeah, here. So it's a hundred dollars upgrade one. If you already have the three and you want to upgrade to it. And what's interesting is I'm noticing this must be a newer version than what I have. Cause this has an ESP 32 on it. The one I have has an ESP 8266. So they must've, uh, they must have changed that, which is good. That's a more powerful one. But I have the older version of the Connect, and it works great. Um, but yeah, it's pretty cool. So, uh, Terminal Sandwich, do we need special litter? Nope. Any clumping litter works with it. And I will tell you this. This thing has probably saved us the cost, or more than the cost at this point, of litter. So, over the long term, because it wastes less litter, because it filters it out... Um, it kind of pays for itself over the long run because it does not use as much litter. We use significantly less litter than when we had traditional litter boxes. So I bet you guys didn't think that we'd be talking about litter boxes on a printer stream. <laughs> but they've been very reliable. They even have they even have a bay in the bottom of them to add a backup battery. So you can have your litter robot have a backup battery. So if the power is out, it can still operate. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah the litter i had the litter robot two i never tried their one the two was decent i definitely like the three better um it's been the litter robot 
two had some weird quirks, but I, I haven't had any issues with the threes. I, I would do it again. Like, if they broke, I would go and buy another one. Uh, no questions asked. I wouldn't even have to think about it. It, it makes having cats so much easier because uh, for those of you guys who have cats, I'm sure your least favorite thing about having them is that you have to scoop the litter box. Uh, scoop the litter boxes. Sometimes I think the word game is stuck on almost everything that isn't serious. If you play me, yeah, we have we have four cats. I love the furry little guys. Um, but I, I, I definitely, I like them both, but if I had to pick, I, I like, I like dogs better than cats. You can just do more with dogs, but I don't dislike the cats. I'll just put it like that. Um, there, there are, there are fur babies. This is still going. How long is this? I mean, we're only two hours in. I guess it just feels longer for some reason. I'm actually waiting on uh, the people over at Maw to get back to me because I asked them if they do wholesale because I want to sell their their uh, drink mix in our shop. I feel like that'd be good. I saw someone asking in our chat about or in our discord about titanium heat breaks those are probably going to be in that dhl shipment that's coming in today I'm just curious, what, do, what does everybody have? What do you guys have? Do you have pets? No pets? If you do have pets, what do you have? If you don't have pets, just no, type no pets. I'm curious. Dogs and fish? What kind of fish do you have? I used to have a freshwater tank. I had a 60 gallon when we lived in Illinois. I kind of miss the fish. I don't miss taking care of them. They're almost more work than a dog. <laughs> One cat, let's see. Dub has got three doggos. Dave's got a dog. Jesse's got dogs and fish. Tyre West, I have kids. Does that count as pets? Um, sure, why not? They're very similar. Or so I'm told. Hey, Michael, it, sound, it sounds like you should save up for a litter robot. I feel like that would be... Just, just picture it like this. Help me scoop the litter boxes or I'm going to spend $500 on a litter box. <laughs> I, I, feel, I feel like that'd be a good sell. You might, you might be able to pull that off. Like I said, I know they're, I know they're, I know they're expensive. They're not cheap, but I can tell you right now, if you got the money, I highly recommend them. I, I highly recommend them. Let me see here. Two cats. They've got a border collie. That's a high energy dog. Although uh, we have a German Shepherd. She's not exactly low energy. Travis has got boxers. Uh, Samantha's um, one of her relatives. They have boxers. I think they used to breed boxers. Um, or maybe they just had boxers. I got a friend uh, named Brandon. He lives in Illinois. Him, his mom, they breed boxers. He's a big boxer guy. Those are good dogs. Um, 
Michael Kessel, no no kids, two dogs and two cats. Kurt Shaw's got five cats. Gary's got two Goldens. Oh, I love Goldens. We wanted to get a Golden Retriever, um, but we couldn't find any in the shelters, and we couldn't even find any breeders around here. Um, so we're getting another German Shepherd. <laughs> Llama's got a serious question. Static on the printers. I keep getting scrambled LCD screens. Seems random. Check wires, check cables, replace cables, shorter cables. People keep getting... Sitting at static, any ideas? Um, you can try running a ground wire from the LCD. Uh, if it's a LCD with an SD slot that's metal, you can tack a wire onto there, run it back to your ground on your uh, power supply. That may fix it. Um, I actually had to do that on one of my printers here just because it's got really long LCD cables. And the longer your LCD cables are, um, the more chances you have for corruption just because they're so long. It's just more area for them to pick up interference. Um, let's see here. Ram design. Horses, chickens, birds, cats, dogs, and donkey. Man, you got a zoo there. Sounds like you might also have some land, which is good. I thought about getting a chicken coop, but Samantha's like, I don't want to deal with chickens. I was like, yeah, but think about the eggs. And then we can also eat them at some point. <laughs> Jesse's got a 110 gallon with a 55 gallon sump. Damn, that's big. Oscars, Jack Dempsey, Convict Cichlids. Yeah, those are cool. Um, I had angelfish, angelfish, some loaches, uh, the clown loaches, and I had I had a lot of plecos. I love plecos, and I had the smaller ones. I had one common one that was about, I don't know, about this big, um, but I had a lot of smaller plecos. I had some bristle noses. I had a vampire one. That one was cool. My buddy got that for me for my birthday. Um, but my buddy Dane, he has my, my fish now. Um, I just didn't feel like setting up an aquarium here at the at the house. I do miss them though. The cats liked watching them. David's got a sheep, a Shiba Inu. Let's see here. Kurt Shaw's got outside cats. Hey, at least you're not scooping litter. I just my concern with outside cats is, especially around here, there's a lot of stuff that can eat them. I would be devastated if one of my cats got eaten. You know, they're annoying, and I don't like cleaning their litter boxes, but I do love them. So, uh, let's see here. Michael Castell. Michael, don't you have those, uh, they're not, they're not German Shepherds. They're another type of Shepherd. I can't remember the breed. I thought you had some other Shepherds. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's what your profile picture is on here. Uh, let's see here. Dodo's got a Rottweiler, Dover Mix, and a Miniature Pincher Mix. That's an assortment. Llama had chickens way back. No matter what we did between the fox and the hawks and owls, they are gone with a few mocks. Oh, that's disappointing. We have foxes here and hawks. I would have to, like, build a pretty solid coop. And then I feel like I'd be waging war against foxes. <laughs> Uh, John said he's, he loves dogs. You have two Bengal cats. Bengal cats are really interesting. Um, I've heard they're very, very friendly and very outgoing. Yeah, Shiloh Shepherds. I knew they were a type of shepherd. Our Mills has got a three-month-old Corgi pup. That's adorable. That's probably the only, like, smaller breed of dog I would own. I definitely like big dogs. I'm not a fan of the little kick-me dogs. Um... What did, what did uh, Ron Swanson say? Uh, I think it was like, any dog under 30 pounds is a cat and cats are useless. I think that's the quote. <laughs> Claire is not a fan of, of, of small dogs either. She she does not like them because they usually come and try to like, rah, 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 you know, and act all tough. And uh, she, she does not play that game. Oh, we're bridging. Bridging! Oh, yeah! Mm. Oh, look at that bridging. Oh. That's my favorite part of the Benji is the bridging. It's just so satisfying to watch. We're almost done. <laughs> JD Cam and JD Cam C says, I've got five grandkids. I'll take dogs instead. <laughs> 
I mean, at least when you get tired of the dogs or they're being a pain, you can put them in a cage without having to worry about uh, child services showing up. <laughs> Brandon says, my wife convinced me to get a poodle. We thought it was a mini. It turned out to be a toy. Wanted something bigger. Now, of course, she is my baby. And I'm her favorite. <laughs> oh, speak of the devil. Come here. Come here. There she is. Come on. Can you, can you come up? Come on. There we are. Here we are. Oh, God. I'm being pushed off of my chair. There we go. Let's, let's, let's switch over. There we go. There's the puppy. Were you sleeping? You look like you were sleeping. We got low ears. I don't know why uh, my buddy Cody's trying to call me. Maybe he doesn't know I'm live. Look at this baby. This is 80 pounds of, 80 pounds of love. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. There's Clara. Everybody's asking where Clara is. There she is. There's my big, big stinky breath dog. Yeah. She's going to have a brother soon. And we have decided on a name for the new dog. We're going to be calling him Remo after my late grandfather who loved dogs. So we'll have Clara and Remo. Um... If you guys notice, we scheduled a stream for, um, or we scheduled a stream for the 23rd, which is a Tuesday, because Monday we'll be coming back from Tennessee. Um, I do have my, my buddy Aaron is actually staying here to keep an eye on the, the house. So, uh, but there will not be an Ask Tim stream on that Monday because we will be on our way back from Tennessee. But when we come back, we will have the puppy. We will have Remo. Um, so we will have a second shepherd and you guys will get to see a puppy on the streams. Um, I actually bought him a little, I got a little pen that came in today. So I'll have that set up behind me. So there'll be puppy area back here. Um, so I will be, uh, Clara Samantha's dog. The new guy will be my dog. Hopefully, hopefully I'm going to try my best, spend as much time as I can with him and spoil the hell out of him. We're so close, and I have to use the bathroom again. I use, uh, we've got, like, reverse osmosis stuff here, and that's what I fill my water up, but it just goes right through you, man. <laughs> Does it count as drinking water if there's also, uh, the, the Maw Energy Drink mix, mix in it? I mean, I feel like it still counts. I'm curious to see what chat thinks. She's like messing. I'm gonna have to close my door. Do you want? Do you want a dingo stick? Oh hell yeah, Dad! Hell yeah! Hell yeah! Can we sit? Come on, be a good girl and sit. Speak. Give me a big one. Yeah. There you go. Um, I just realized my light back here is flickering. I need to close the door so she stops going and uh, she noses around the cars. There's the, there's the poo poo bells. Um, let me reset this. I noticed they sometimes do it where if they flick on and off too quickly, it goes into like this low power mode. Um, try not to move the boxes too much because Clara is scared of boxes for some reason. I have no idea why. Yeah. Look at this. Look at this baby. Yeah. I know. There you go. Finish your treat. He's like, Dad, put me down. I have a snack to eat. <laughs> oh, she got treats yesterday. Travis. I mean, I mean, this is, this is, I fill this all the way up with water. This is the big one. What is this? This is a 45 ounce. So I fill this up with water. I put my two scoops of Ma in there, and then I sip on this. Nope, someone's talking about Discord. Discord live streams. Ooh, Discord's doing a skull. Aside from some, like... I, it's not banding. It's definitely, like, a layering issue. 
Um, let's see here. Main monitor. It's coming out good aside from these, like, these banding lines here. Not bad, though. Let's see. We're so close. We're so close. I want to tear into this thing. <laughs> Did you guys see that? She's nosing the other bag of treats right here. I've got these, like, little snackers. You can have one. You can have one. I don't want your tummy getting upset from too many treats. See how nice she sits? She's such a good dog. I will say, after having many owned many dogs, like, in growing up, uh, this has been the easiest dog to train. She's also very food motivated, so that helps too. Let's see if I can get her to... I've been trying to work with her on this. Okay, wait. Wait. She's not going to wait. Wait. Oh, and we dropped it. <laughs> I got to work on that. I want to get her to, like, put the treat on her nose and then help grab it. We're almost done, which means I get to take it apart. It's my favorite part. And we'll test the power supply. We'll see if it's got a good ground. Good girl. You're such a good girl. Oh. Not too shabby. Let's let's take the Oh yeah, that that has that came off really easy. I could definitely see this bed pulling up. Mmm. Let's see. Yeah, this reminds me of the Corality bed. So just pulling that off. Look at that. Hang on, let me let me zoom this out. I gotta change back to autofocus mode. Here, look at. This is why I don't like these. Do you see this? Because they're they're very they're just they're just they're cheap. They don't last very long. They're not durable. So, I'll I'll end up putting one of our Easy Flex systems on here. But like you can see that just pulling that off. Yeah, I would have rather it just came with the the sheet that sticks on. Maybe I can flatten that out again. I'll take things that don't happen with a flex sheet for 500. Yeah, it's still it's still raised up. Yeah, I mean this is the same kind of stuff Creality uses, and this is the same thing. Like, weren't even weren't even that close on the bottom. So, but let's look at the print quality. Now we sped it up right about here. This still came out really good. I do see, you guys see that? I do see some salmon skin there. Just a little bit. I, I would call it acceptable. But it was also printed really fast. This came out really good. Probably supposed to let it cool first. Let's see if the manual says that. I, I don't think that's really going to help too much, though, because that if it's sticking really hard... Um, it might release a little bit. Let's see here. Let's see. Yeah, it does say wait for them to cool before removing magnetic sticker. So I'll try printing on, an, on another part and see if it comes off easier. It should in theory, but I've also had the Creality's do this even when they're cold. But... You can flex a flex plate while it's warm. Doesn't matter. But anyways, this is like the least of my concerns. This is something that you end up replacing anyways. It's nice that they include it though. They give you something. Um, but I digress. Let's let's see here. Let's test the grounding. And we can do that really easily. We don't even have to open it up because this pin right here is the ground. I'm going to go from here to the chassis and we're going to see what we get. 
I'm also curious if this is a 24 volt or a 12 volt. I, I'm, I'm going to say it's probably 24. Uh, yeah, it is. It says 24 on the sticker. So it's a 24 volt machine. Let's see what we get here. All right, so I'm going to touch the probe leads together. And I just want to see what my, my base resistance is for the leads. So right at zero. So let's go ahead and touch the ground plug here. And I'm just going to go to a point on the chassis. And I'm pressing in on it. Let's give it a sec to settle. Not terrible, but not not zero. Um, let's go here on another portion. Probably gonna come out right about the same. Nah. So, not terrible, but not good. Um, it should be it should be lower than that. This is the same stuff we deal with on the Creality machines and their power supplies. Let's see. Let's see what brand this is. I didn't pay attention when I was putting it on. Oh, it's the same as Creality's. It's the, the Changling brand. C H E N G L I A N G Cheng Cheng Ling. I'm probably saying that wrong. Um, what I want to see is, can I do the same fix? It should be able to. Where if you uh, reseat one of the screws on the inside, it'll give it a better ground. Um. Silent Rush, I would be more inclined to trust the reliability of the stock board over a big tree tech board. Um, as far as I know, there's no issues with these boards from any cubic. Just just do know that if you buy a big tree tech board and it goes out, you're probably not going to get any replacements from them. Um, let's see. I need a bigger screwdriver. Here it is. I was going to say, I knew I had a bigger Phillips on my desk. You can see here, there's like these little pieces of the plastic that are between the screw heads and the uh, the chassis, which is not good because that can impede the grounding. Yeah, no, I've been pretty happy with any cubic in general. They're they're one of the better Chinese companies out here. All right, so typically it's this guy right here, this screw right here on these Changlings or Liang, I don't know, Changling. This screw right here by the power input terminal is usually what you need to loosen up. I'll usually like move the board a little bit if I can. This one doesn't move at all. And then just tighten this back down. Just tight, tighten that back down. And that'll usually give it a good ground. So let's let's test now from the ground terminal to the power supply chassis. Put my mine in ohms mode, just regular ohms. There we go. Alright. Let's go ahead and touch that. 
the ground wire and let's touch the chassis here. Look at that, like magic. That's what it that's what it should be. Pretty pretty close to uh pretty close to zero. It actually got down to zero. So there we go. Yeah, Big Tree Tech clones a lot of a lot of boards. Cause MakerBase was the one that came up with the Gen L, and then they came out with the S Gen L, and the Big Tree Tech's like, that's cool, and then made their SKR. So, but MakerBase definitely makes better quality boards than Big Tree Tech. If we're talking about cheaper Chinese boards, uh, if I had to choose between Big Tree Tech and MakerBase, I'm going MakerBase. So, because my experience too is when I've had, I had one MakerBase Gen L that I had an issue with and they took care of it actually really quickly. So, whereas Big Tree Tech, when I bought their first version of the SKR E3, the 1.0, it came DOA and it took them a month and a half to actually get it sorted out and then wanted me to pay shipping to send it back. I was like, no, you can either send me a label or just send me another board and I'm going to junk this one. Um, yeah, not, not a very good experience with them. But MakerBase was pretty painless when I did have issues with them. And like I said, I've only had one board from them where I had a problem, so... Let's go ahead and put this back together now that we sorted out the ground. I don't get why they just can't test these power supplies at the factory. Like, because here's the problem. If you have a bad ground on your machine, and the AC, the mains gets exposed. If the grounding's not good, it's going to find ground through your body, which will kill you. Um, I guess I shouldn't say will. It could kill you. It's it's very probable that it could kill you uh, or cause a lot of harm. Versus having a proper ground and the electricity will find its way through to ground instead of through you. So this is why it's so important. It may seem nitpicky, and I know it comes up a lot, but there's a reason I cover it. It's because it's important. So, any cubic, uh, I'm not letting you off the hook just because that's how it is with the Chinese printers and these power supplies. And I'm also going to be willing to bet they probably tend the wires because they tend their wires, which is another safety issue because if you tend wire, if you put tin wires, especially this that is pulling a decent amount of amperage because it says the heated bed, um, the terminals will melt and could cause a fire and at the very least damage your board and then you're having to buy a new control board because they decided to terminate their wires improperly. Like, I'm surprised we're still seeing a lot of companies uh, from China that are tending their wires still. Like, I've been bitching about it for almost three years now and they still don't get the hint. You know, or not even hint, the direct message of me telling you them that the wires are tinned. All right, so if you notice, this is a slightly different version of the housing from the V1. The V1 did not have a plastic housing like this, um, which I'm not complaining about the plastic housing. The housing is the housing for the most part. Um, let's see, there is a fan on the bottom here. So we got a cooling fan. I do kind of like this because you can get access to it. Uh, this board is the same exact board that's in the Mega Zero V1. It just actually has screw terminals and the bed MOSFET populated. So if you guys want to have a good look here. Yeah, let's see. Tinder, no tinned. What do we, what do we think? And then after we're done looking at this, I'm going to wrap the stream up because I do have other stuff I need to get to today. What are you thinking? Tinder, no tinned. Tinder, no tinned. No, no, tinned wires is not take a shot. It was, if it doesn't have tinned wires, I take a shot. Was that what it was? I'm pretty sure is if we get a printer that doesn't have tinned wires, I have to take a shot because I'm assuming that they have tinned wires. Let's find out. 
All right. Mm, I thought they weren't tinned for a second, but they are. They're tinned. Like, they're not tinned very much, but they're tinned. Like, this doesn't come off. I was like, oh shit, did they not tin them? No, they, they tinned them. Like, damn. They're not tinned. Or, no, sorry. They're tinned, they're just not tinned a lot. Like, if they weren't tinned then these would be separating, but you can see here they're not separating, which means they're tinned. Tinned wires cause fires. Just remember that. So. I'm willing to bet the bed wires are tinned too. I'm pretty sure this is the bed. Nope, they're tinned. They're tinned as well. So all of them are tinned. So what I will do before we put this into service in our print farm is we'll cut all these off. I'm gonna leave these in here so I remember what goes where. Um, we'll cut those off and strip them. I dropped my screwdriver. There we go. Uh, we'll cut these off, strip them, and then insert bare wires. That's what you guys should do. Check all your printers if you haven't already. Uh, if you're watching this channel, you should be well aware. Um, but yeah, so the good news is this, so like our easy out filament sensor, that'll work with this. It's the same exact board. Um, I figured it was. I had a guy send me pictures of this who had the V2 before I unboxed this and is using the firmware that we have out. So I was able to get firmware done for it without actually having the printer because the V1 is, is basically the same machine just without a heated bed. So, all in all, I mean, there's nothing, nothing out of the ordinary, typical Chinese machine crap, you know, the tinned wires, the poor grounding, it sucks. Um, I'm not going to say that this should be expected. Um, I, it's not acceptable that this is still happening in 2021, um, but I do have a rep's email. I'm going to tell them, I doubt they're going to do anything about it because I've been telling these companies for years now to stop tending the damn wires but and fix your grounding on your power supplies but they just they don't listen so um yeah anyways that will be that uh in other in other in other news or updates on this i mean this prints like the v1 and the v1 printed great so uh they didn't screw anything up with that um uh, it's prints good or prints well i should say um, so no complaints there for me. It's, I think it's, it's a good little printer. It's well put together. Um, just typical Chinese stuff with the tin wires and the bad grounding on the power supply. So it wasn't terrible, but you guys saw all I had to do is tighten that screw up. And now we got a much better ground. We were at like 0.8 to 1.0 ohms of resistance. And now we're down to 0.1 or lower, which is what it should be. So anyways, um, that's a, that's about it. I'm going to wrap this up. I appreciate everybody that stopped by. It's only two and a half hour stream. It's not terrible. So, um, like I said, in general, I like, I'm not a huge, any, like I'm not a, any cubic fanboy, but in general, and this keeps holding true on every single machine we check out from them, whether it's one we bought or one we had sent to us, they seem to be very consistent with the quality of their machines. So they do cost a little bit more than machines like Creality, but like myself and other people in chat said, their support is actually decent. Uh, the printers are well put together. Their QC seems to be a lot better than other companies. So I have no problem recommending their machines. Um, they do seem to do a very good job at making sure things are done correctly for the most part. I don't understand why it's 2021 and we're still getting tin wires on our machines. I, I don't understand it. I've, I've been very vocal about this. I'm sure you, I'm sure someone could make a compilation of every single time that I've gone and checked wires and my reaction to them being tin. So... Um, like I said, all in all, Anycubic just keeps making decent machines. Like, they keep making machines that go together easily. The quality's good. Um, I do think it justifies the extra cost of the features and the build quality over machines like Creality. So, 
Uh, the only downside and drawback is that the thing with Creality is that you do have a bigger ecosystem of modifications and upgrades. So upgrading something like this is going to be a little more difficult to do than a Creality machine just because there's not as many options out there. But if you're looking for a printer to keep mostly stock, they're not bad machines. Um, so that's I'll leave it there. Um, I'm happy with it. it. It prints just as good as the V1. So print quality between the V1 and the V2 is the same. Um, but with the V2, you do get the heat of bed. So I uh, I can recommend either of them. So if you guys are in the market for a, a decent little machine, check it out. I bought this directly from their website. I just realized I did not put a link in their, the description. So I'll go back and edit that. But anyways, I hope you guys learned something. I hope you guys had fun hanging out. I appreciate everybody that stopped by. We peaked at over 120 viewers. So it was good. So I will be back again tomorrow at the very latest with another Ask Tim at 2 p.m. Central. And um, I'm going to try to shoot to do a stream later tonight just as a casual hangout uh, where I'm working on something. And we all just kind of shoot the shit. So anyways, you all have a good afternoon. And as always, happy printing.